Today on End of the Bench, baseball is more than halfway through the season. We take a look at where the men stand now, plus the softball team still dominating in conference play and at the national level. Also, where are they headed? We take a look at where Bruin basketball players are going after finishing their time here at SLCC. And springing into volleyball, we take a look at some new additions to the team, two of which are twins from Brazil. This and more coming up next here on End of the Bench. Welcome to End of the Bench, I'm Michael Waters and with me today is Brianna Wynn. Brianna, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm currently a freshman here at Salt Lake Community College. Um, my plan is to major in communications and then eventually go into sports broadcasting. Um, I've been playing soccer ever since I was very young, able to walk, and I just have always had a passion for either watching or playing sports. So. Are you going to try out for the soccer team here? I think, I, I think so. There's a good <laughs> chance. <laughs> what position were you? Forward. Oh, so, so yeah. yeah. You're the attacker. I would, yeah. I would be defending you. I was always the defender. I would never be. Yeah, no, or I'd be the goalie. Not good at either of those. <laughs> That's okay. Well, good luck to you. Hopefully you make the team. And Thank you. let's actually get started now for uh, baseball. Let's take a look at where baseball stands right now. They're doing fairly well towards the middle of the season as the season starts to wind down. Here's some of their stats. What do you notice about them? So, yeah, I definitely noticed that the um, ERA has dropped. Uh, the other ones look pretty consistent, pretty stable. But definitely that ERA, that um, is the biggest change. One thing that I really liked what Coach D.G. Nelson said toward the beginning of the year, that this is a very clutch group, that they perform their best at the end of games. Um, now right. here are the standings in baseball. What do you notice about you know where Salt Lake stands from those uh, other two at the top? So yeah, number three, that's awesome. Um, they're definitely doing good. They're kind of in the middle, but um, I think that, yeah, they're doing awesome and especially the two no-hitters pitched recently against USU, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, big props so. to Jaden Hartle and yeah. Lincoln Clayton. You know, both of those, there was only one error in the game and one run for both Lincoln and Jaden. So you take away that one error and that one run, and they've pitched a perfect game. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's absolutely fantastic for them to see these guys play, to see their no-hitters and all that stuff. Here's Definitely. the Schedule for them, April 22nd and 23rd versus Nevada. That'll be at home. And May 6th and 7th against Southern Idaho. That will be at home as well at Kate Field on the Jordan campus. That's out there at 90th South and Bangor Highway. So let's go out. Let's support these young men in their endeavors. And hopefully they will be able to, you know, be clutch and be able to, you know, go on a tear at the end of the season. And then when region tournament comes around, they'll be able to win region and go on to Grand Junction to play in the national tournament. Well, let's now go ahead, we'll shift into softball, take a look at how dominating they have been so far into the mm -hmm. season, and what can you say about the softball team? So yeah, their stats look pretty consistent. Um, ERA is good, not too much of a change, um, and they're currently ranked number four in the nation, which just switched actually. I think it was at, what, number three, then it was at five, now we're back at four. So, yeah, good job, ladies. Looks great. Looks awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited for the ladies and for the remainder of their season. These stats, if you can be this consistent all season long, you're definitely going places, and you're going to maintain that rank at number four. And in conference play, I mean, 21-1, and one, the one loss they had in the conference came to Southern Idaho. Southern Idaho is another really good team. They are currently ranked 11th in the nation mm -hmm. right now. So not necessarily a bad loss to have because, mm -hmm. you know, not they're also all. another ranked team. Right. Uh, Lauren Goslin, she was named Player of the Week in the conference. Pretty, pretty impressive numbers against Southern Idaho. Four of nine at bat. She had five RBIs plus two home runs. And it seems like I see a trend here that SLCC in softball, they always – get a player of the week in right. at least two times a month, maybe three times a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like they are kind of getting some more national attention than what 
you know, they've gotten in the past, they should be getting more. And I feel like we need to get more people out to the games as well because they are a really great group of girls. They're a big family. I like what they said before, you know, they fight like sisters, they love each other like sister. How important is that to, you know, have that kind of chemistry? No, I think that's really important. Also with um, the baseball team, they're, they've got great chemistry. A lot of them have been friends since they were little, and I think that's what helps them play together well, and they all know each other and how they, how they play, and that just really helps with definitely that chemistry is a big thing, so. And the softball team also, they kind of have a, an easy schedule coming up at the end of the season. Let's go ahead and take a look at where that schedule is now. April 29th and April 30th, they will be at home versus Colorado Northwestern Community College. Go out, support the Lady Bruins. And these are just the final games of the season. Then May 6th and May 7th, those will be the two final games at Southern Idaho. Maybe make a little bit of a road trip, go up to Twin Falls, watch these ladies play. And before those two games, or those two matchups, I guess, between Colorado Northwestern and Southern Idaho, they'll be playing of the Nevada team, Southern and Western Nevada, and those should both be wins, but I feel like we need to emphasize those games at the end of the season because, for one, it's going to be their last home game of the season, and then they'll also be facing off against a good College of Southern Idaho team to close out the season, so I feel like they need exposure so we can get people to come to those games. Right. And how important is it to get people out to these games? It's definitely important. Um, the fans definitely help, and all the support is great and it helps the girls and the guys, and yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's well needed, definitely. So. Let's go ahead now, let's take a look at the All-American teams for basketball. Uh, Tyler Clark, she was named to the first team All-American for the ladies, congrats to her. She doesn't know where she is going yet to school, but I've heard that she is looking at some pretty big schools. Tyler Rawson, congrats to him as well. He was named to the third team in All-Americans, but I feel like the men, really kind of got the shaft on the All-American teams. No, yeah, I think so. I think with the champion team, they ha they've got a lot of star players, a lot of good players, and especially Connor Toulson, he was MVP, and I think he deserves some recognition. I think a lot of them do, but congrats to Tyler, um, definitely, because that's awesome for him, so. Yeah, not even an honorable mention for the national MVP. Yeah. It's, you know, but still congrats to them. They have yeah. that national championship title, and I think that's, really all that matters. Uh, let's also give congrats to Scott Cook. He is going right. to be playing at Westminster. Austin Wadups, he's going to be playing for the University of Alberta up in Canada, eh? And Connor Toulson and Christian Musoko will be going to UVU, both of them, so they'll be able to yeah. play together. And then Tyler Rawson, he's uh, headed up to the hill. Yep. He's gonna be playing for the <laughs> University of Utah. Yep. And how dangerous is it for him, you know? His parents raised him as yeah, BYU Yeah, no, BYU fan. fans, it's a big rival. And now, <laughs> How do you think that affects him, um, his family being, do you think that really matters? No, I don't think so, yeah, but really I mean, if you make it a rival, it's a rival, so. Um, but no, I think he'll do great there, so. Yeah, congrats to Tyler Rawson on getting to the University of Utah. He's definitely earned it. All these guys have earned where they're going, and I think they've got pay dirt, to be right. honest. They've found pay dirt here at Salt Lake Community College, and from where they're going, we congratulate them and wish them the best of luck. Let's go ahead now, let's trans transition into uh, volleyball. We have some new faces on the volleyball team. Two of them are actually twins from Southern Brazil, and we actually had the opportunity to speak to them and what it's like playing here in America compared to Brazil and their uh, chemistry as sisters on the volleyball court. A gente está muito animada, porque aqui a estrutura é muito melhor que no Brasil. E no Brasil a gente não pode treinar e estudar junto. E aqui a gente pode fazer isso. E aí a escola e o vôlei são muito bons. São melhores do que no Brasil. A gente começou no vôlei com 7 anos e a gente passou por quatro times. Foi convocada para a seleção nacional, a Tami. Convocada para a seleção estadual. Ah, é muito bom porque a gente tem conexão. Ah, é perfeito. Não sei explicar. Here is what the twins have to bring to the table. Tem and Ty Fuchs, the dynamic duo. Here's their resume. What do you, what can you say about these two? I mean, they said it in the interview. We had both state and Brazilian school champs, both named to the state selection teams for four years running, and Tem was called to the youth national team in 2015. Yeah, so they've got a lot of experience, it looks like. Um, they're also sisters, so that definitely helps. Um, 
they both know how each other plays. They know all those good things that are great to know, and it definitely helps a lot. So, I especially like what uh, Scott Kaiser said. Coach Scott said he's a the assistant coach for volleyball. He said that uh, since they graduated in December, they were able to bring them in earlier than normal so that they could, you know, get right. them accustomed to, you know, English, try and mm -hmm. get them to learn a little bit more in English. And then once the season starts in fall, they will be able to, you know, start taking their prerequisites and all those sorts of classes. So we wish them luck yeah. in learning English, not necessarily an easy language to learn yeah. for those coming out of America, but still congrats to them on you know, being here at Salt Lake Community College. We wish them the best. Let's also take a look at a few other players. Uh, Olivia Osborne, she hails from Arizona. Yeah, so she's lettered three out of her four years in high school, um, named first team All-City, and also named player of the year as a senior, which is awesome. Aubrey Steiner as well, she's coming in. She's from Billings, Montana. She's a three-time state champ. Her attack efficiency was about 38% with 324 kills and 119 blocks in her 2015 season, which is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And she was second team all-conference as a sophomore, then first team all-conference in her junior and her senior year. Not only that, but off the court, she is amazing. Three-time academic all-state honoree, and she's in the National Honor Society. So great things coming from both on the court and off the court yep. from her. And then also Joy Randall coming from Morgan, Utah. Yeah, so she's a local. She's a 3A state champion um, where their team went undefeated, actually. Uh, Max Preps named her Utah's assistant leader, and she also was named All-State all junior and her senior year. So, Very exciting to have all these ladies coming in. They definitely have very impressive resumes coming to Salt Lake Community College. Mm -hmm. We wish all of them the best going into this coming season. And some more big news coming from Salt Lake Community College and in hand with Utah Jazz, the development league team for the Jazz, the Idaho Stampede, they're actually moving down to Salt Lake City. They'll be called the Salt Lake City Stars and they are playing all of their home games at Salt Lake Community College at the campus on Redwood. So how big is this for Salt Lake Community College? Yeah, no, I think this is huge. I think that um, it's gonna bring a lot of exposure to Salt Lake Community College and also with the money coming in and all that great stuff. It's going to be awesome. And they also mentioned a scholarship that will be offered to students. We're, we don't have much on that information yet, but we will definitely get that to you as more information starts coming in. But as you said, you know, the exposure is mm -hmm. going to be great for the school yeah. and the money coming in will help maintain the building. And the jazz organization is also very familiar yeah. already with Salt Lake Community College because they had their summer league team, the Rocky Mountain Review. They came in and played at Salt Lake Community College, so right. they will already be in the know. And right. it, it's also important to notice that the uh, Salt Lake Community College athletics, they will have priority mm -hmm. over the gym and stuff whenever they need to practice. Yep. And that the Salt Lake City Stars will be scheduling things around Salt Lake Community College's right. plans. So nothing will be disturbed for Salt Lake Community College. And right. very exciting, go out, yeah. see some of the stars. That's a bad joke. That was a really <laughs> bad joke. I really did That's not say that. Uh, and also, Kevin Dustin, here's what he had to say about uh, the Salt Lake City Stars coming and playing at Salt Lake Community College. We are very excited about the opportunity to host the Stars. We hope the entire community will embrace them and that SLCC will see the results of thousands of fans coming onto our campus. So go out, see yep. the great basketball, basketball players, and I'm sure there will be some of benefits coming for Salt Lake Community College students as far as admission. Maybe you get in for free or maybe you'll get a discounted ticket. We, we're not sure yet, but we will be sure to get that to you as soon as we know. Uh, to see the schedule and results for all sports here at SLCC, be sure to visit slccbruins.com slash calendar. And that'll do it for this episode of End of the Bench. You can find this and other episodes of End of the Bench on vimeo.com slash slccvoices. You can also find us on Facebook at SLCC Student Media Center and on Twitter and Instagram at SLCC SMC. From Brianna and I, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time here on End of the Bench.